Yes. Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, Hello, my guys. Okay, I gotta leave. What's, what's up, my peeps? Here we go. That's a real reference for some real dudes. <sighs> Why is it Sam in the green room still? It's oh, a glitch. That's, that's a Discord it's glitch. Discord glitch occasionally will happen. Uh, good. Wow. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, you're the clone, Mike. <laughs> yeah, because I'm the I'm the I'm the faker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you're, you're the clone. God, that that new like phone layout's pretty garbage, isn't it? Like I, I can't stand oh, it. it. I'm just waiting. Yeah. I'm waiting for where we all collectively get together. It's just like bully, um, bully Discord to the point where they change it back. I mean, we already have, and they just don't care. <laughs> Um, well, we need, we like need literally to literally like the 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 work in progress uh, early access mobile layout they had was so good. I mean, it wasn't good, but it was like I could actually like find the it? servers I was in. Like I okay. could search for servers, but now they removed that, so I, I'm just stuck scrolling for six years trying to find I, whatever specific. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, it's pretty bad. No, I don't like it. I gotta fix it. They really have to fix it, otherwise it's just gonna be. In the way they misery. changed the the search filters thing. Yep, no, that sucks. Can't really. Why would they anything. remove the ability to search for messages from a specific user? Apparently, there is a way to glitch it. Like, there's a way to um, glitch it so it returns back to the old version. I'm not sure how, but Sean was telling me about this. I wish. And I'm just thinking, hey, maybe you know, might God, as well. I wish that was me. Honestly, I don't know how. Like after, like after overclocked finish, I've not really had much use for it anymore. Like, I haven't really needed to, like. Too much, I guess. Like it's just sort of been a thing. Yeah, I'm just using it mainly just to play Lethal Company with the boys, and uh, that's about it. But why was the company Lethal? Because right, there's a lot of shady stuff we're doing. Have you played it yet, Duck? Or uh, no? Uh, I've been planning on it. I just haven't had the time. It's Ten bucks. I got gifted for. I got. I got a, what am I saying? Someone gifted it for me. So it's pretty good. Should be free though, I reckon. But it's just make it free to play at this point. If they did that, they'd have to make it like live service. <laughs> Nobody <sighs> wants that. Well, it's it's popular enough to. Oh, I mean, maybe not. Phasma was free, right? What? Phasma was free. Yeah. I I, I don't think so. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I really haven't. I, I haven't. I like. I still haven't playing anything recently. I don't, I don't even play TF two. I sort of dropped out of it. Yeah, same. I haven't really touched it. Mainly, yeah. mainly because, I mean, like, maybe we're sort of late to that. I mean, there, there was another influx of bots, and at that point, I was just like, Did you get the radio, hit the go live? Yeah. Uh, we're going to go live? If you guys are ready. Yeah, I'm, oh, ready. I'm ready. All right. Ready. On the live in. I'll see you sound low on my end. Uh, cool. Oh, sorry. I was away from the mic. All right. I'm going to go live in three. Two, one, and all right. Floor's all yours, guys. Mm, floor's all yours, guys. Hello. All righty. So, Kelp, I'll let you introduce the panel. All righty. Sounds good. Well, welcome everyone on in to the Sonic Forces Overclocked q and I am your host, Diane Dr. Kelp, along with uh, my wonderful co-host, Kevin. Uh, and these are our wonderful guests, the developers, uh, the Duck Dealer and Mike Street. You guys want to give an intro for yourselves? Well, I'm going to let Doc go first, I reckon, because I've got to think about what I want to say. So, uh, I was hoping you were going to go first. Uh, hi, I, I am very introverted, so I don't know what to say. Uh, um, hi, I guess. I, 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 I made the funny mod, and it, and it, was, it, was, really, it was really fun. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Um, I'm hi. I'm Mikester. Uh, I'm one of the uh, one of the three directors of Sonic Forces Overclocked. Uh, we're working on the project for many years now. You know, we've been doing a lot for it, and um, now it's out. So, yeah, that's that's what we're here for. Just pretty much just to answer a few questions about it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, so how this panel is going to work is this going to be a Q&A. You can feel free to raise your hands to ask some questions to our lovely guests here. Mm-hmm. And uh, we also may chime in with a few of our own questions, that being me and Kevin. Um, and yeah, er- everything is the same as usual. Normal panel rules apply. Family friendly, all that good jazz. Please keep it to the topic of the actual panel. Um, but yeah, other than that, Kevin, do you want to start by asking any questions that you've got? 
Yeah. So what was the idea behind this whole thing? How did, how did this all get started? Well, uh, if we want to get, if we want to get down to specifics, it all kind of started way back in, uh, 2018, uh, which is kind of insane considering we're now in the year 2024. Seven months after forces came out, I think. No, it was, it was roughly like, like a year, it was, like it was eight months, just, just under a year after forces came out. Right. Uh, yeah. and at that point, um, like, you know, modding for it was pretty, like, low level, you know. Not I mean, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it, it, like, there was a few people, like, obviously, you know, you sort of joined the scene, like, early on. Um, but initially the idea um, was, so at that point, um, Sonic Mania Encore mode had come out, right? So from there, the uh, the idea was actually to, um, uh, geez, hold on. Uh, um, I guess I'll finish what you're saying. So, uh, Encore Mode for Mania had come out, and basically, since, you know, Forces and Mania go hand in hand, in a way, we wanted to sort of give Forces the Encore Mode treatment. Yeah, that's and pretty much it. Sorry about dropping that, that, by the way. That first came into fruition in the form of, um, uh, there was a modder called Infinite Force, who was the uh, original um, uh, creator of the project. Like, he was, like, pretty much the whole reason I even got into modding Forces in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um Basically, what he did was sort of make Green Hill like sort of like covered in ash, um, and then he used a lot of the Phantom Ruby assets to a um, I will say uh, not the best use of assets, but it caught on it caught a lot of people's attention. I would say. Yeah, it just it, it was just like a it was like a test thing that just like changed a bunch of textures and cobbled together a bunch of different things. The idea was to sort of like. Add a little bit more like visual like complexity to the area, make it seem like more stuff was going on in the background, and that from there that was sort of the seed that sort of planted the idea of creating like an encore mode for Sonic Forces, um, which pretty much just at that point like there were, there was a few like it was it was just like lighting swaps and texture swaps for all the all the main zones really like it was pretty much the actual encore mode. Um, it wasn't until like a couple months later, I think when Duck, you joined uh, up with Infinite Force, and you, t- I, you two. I think it was of- within the same. I think it was within three days, actually. <laughs> three. Um, okay, well, there you go. Like, um, uh, I know, like when I joined, like originally, um, I think Infinite Force had put Infinite and Eggman at the end of the stage, and yeah. um, I like apparently he had been just planning to just have it be an extension of Forces, like like they would still be working together. Yep. And I, I, the way I interpreted it was that they were facing off against one another because Eggman sort of betrayed Infinite at the end of the game. Right. And that pretty much was the thing that sparked the entire, like the entirety of the narrative for Sonic Force Overclocked. And that's what still carried on to the current iteration, which is sort of amazing. Um, it's, you know, it's just, it's just crazy that it all kind of started from, from there. And uh, from that point, yeah, we did like, there was like a bunch of lightning swaps, but then yeah, Duck decided, hey, why don't we just do this entire, like, story? Like, why don't we make it, like, a proper sequel story, you know? Because on- Encore Mode and Mania, that was a sequel, technically, to the original Mania. Um, but it's kind of dark. You decided, hey, let's turn this into a full thing. Sorry, I just got to go for one more second. All right. Um, All good? I would. I was going to say, uh, well, I, yeah, I guess the thought escapes me, but um, I guess uh, if you guys had anything to say about it, no, I just I think it was really interesting. I know some people in the chat were pointing out some uh, some screenshots in the in the discussion chat showing uh, what looks like the early version of of Green Hill. Um, oh yeah, yeah, it was that one. That was the first one that kind of started it all. <laughs> yeah, we uh, there were so many particles in that version. I um I had spent like I think an hour deleting them. <laughs> so <laughs> instead of like and then this was before we had started from scratch so this is what we were still working with that version gotcha so um that can kind of springboard into my next question which is um you know most games uh when you're when you're making a mod for a game you have to work within the game's codes code what sort of challenges arose specifically with dealing with modding sonic forces in particular um i would say a lot of it stems from the fact that like like the core team like me brandon and mike we're not like really programmers 
So, like, I've done a little bit of, like, looking into programming, but I haven't done anything, like, major yet. And that this was very recent as well. But um, a lot of the bigger Sonic modding community, like, for, like, Hedgehog Engine games, just don't really have much of an interest in forces, understandably. And yeah, then that, like that pair with Genuvo... Is the, generations is, like, the, the really big one that a lot of people mod. Yeah. Um, and, of course, with Genuvo in the way... Um, that's even less of a reason for people to want to do that. Um, most of the code stuff for the mod was done at the like literally within the last week of development um, before we released it. That's interesting. Um, and uh, I guess uh, everything else was pretty much just me experimenting with the engine and figuring out ways to exploit uh, like oversights to sort of get like certain set pieces to work properly. Like, um, for example, the uh, like in the final boss, Infinite and Neo Metal Sonic moving around, that's all done with egg chasers. Interesting. Uh, I think I'll give a second for for Mikester to come back in case Mike wants to add something to that. Um, but yeah, I just I find it interesting because a lot of the times uh, with Sonic modding in particular, there's certain games that are a lot easier, whether it be from some sort of like coding wall or some sort of like just the way the game is, that it makes it easier to mod. Um, just based off of that, like I know generations is the really popular one. And then mania is also one that gets modded a lot. Um, but specifically with forces because of the way that game controls the way that game handles, just all the physics with that game can make it a, a challenge to kind of work around, you know? Yeah. Um, like there, there's a lot of stuff I still want to do with forces and, um, I'll probably do it sometime in the future. It's just, I don't know when that will be. And it won't be anything major like Overclocked, unless it's like Reimagined. Like there's a couple things I still want to do with Reimagined, but uh, that's probably going to come later. But I, I'm more I'm more referring to stuff like fixing things like the jump being locked to a single axis for some reason. Yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah, the jump. Sorry, by the way, I've just done in and out. There's <laughs> stuff going on. Um yeah, the jumping was definitely like a big thing we had to we had to deal with, and that's yeah. If we can, if that's one thing we'd want to get fixed, uh, definitely do it. But unfortunately, we're not we're not that good with uh, coding. Fortunately, I'm very it's close. All, I just got to figure out what I'm doing with it. It's all it's all smoke and mirrors overclocked. It's all fake. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's an okay. illusion. Anyway, uh, what what did we just get through? By the way, uh, uh, I'm just gonna asked like what were some of the challenges that uh came oh. up working specifically with forces rather than opposed to uh certain other games like, that are more commonly modded like mania and generations like tool wise or like creative wise like uh, I, I went over the creative aspect i guess if you wanted it to could be cool anything ones. from like creative or just coding wise anything really just some of the challenges like working with forces specifically as opposed to something like generations or mania well i guess um <laughs> Well, what was some of the stuff you brought up, Doc? I was just mostly talking about like how we use like the in-game objects, like gizmos and egg chasers. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, that's a, that's a huge thing of it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it was all like it's all like just it's not like us making custom objects because you can't really do that. We just had to like make like we had to use like the, know, the egg robos in um, Dead Atmosphere are all done with platforms. Yeah, which is which is weird to hear, but that's pretty much how it was all. It's again all smoke and mirrors, but um, yeah, that's pretty because you, you, we can't really yeah we, we're not we don't have the capabilities to actually like add custom objects into forces of course and I don't know if that's the case with any other game really but it, it's um it was really just a matter of getting um uh the like I think one of the biggest challenges creatively um was mainly to do with level design I think just because um yeah. One of the main struggles that we sort of had to uh, realize when we were um, like during a very early development was trying to th pin down, okay, how do we like properly design levels for this game? Because, you know, whatever you think of forces compared to Generations and Unleashed, it is slightly more like it has less moves to work with. Like it doesn't, you don't have a drift and you, like you don't have the light dash. You don't have, well, I guess you do with the lightning wisp on, but like you don't, you don't have as much like wriggle room in terms of what you can do, right? So you, we have to you have to kind of work within the limitations of forces to actually like 
properly make something like to properly design levels for it. And that, that, it, it amounted to a little bit more than just like, you know, just making boost roads and all that. It was all like, like we initially had to like create like a design outline in terms of how we'd um, actually design the levels. And that sort of became a like a Bible for, that we'd have to follow when we were properly doing it. And that's, that's sort of where, um, that's sort of what the initial like freight frenzy demo was, was really like trying to like get that core, those core design elements like really like set in stone so that we could, that we could then work on all the other levels. Interesting. There was a, um, like, uh, probably not going to show this just yet, but there was a, um, like sort of like a in-between version of freight frenzy where I think Mike was the one who mainly worked on that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. That one, like that, the freight frenzy is, is it's a really important level just because it really like taught us like what the kind of do's and don'ts of how we design these levels because the, like the initial version that I like that I made was, it was really like, it was really bad. You know, it was like, it was, um, it entirely like foregoed like a lot of the design principles that we have now. Um, a lot of it was just very like blocky kind of like hashed together. Like we put the, the, like, the three, like really small, like a small little like scaffolding platforms with the boxes on them. Yeah, no, it was just a lot of, um, just a lot of big like blocks just placed around it. It wasn't like very natural level design at all. It didn't really, it didn't really feel like organically, like it didn't organically flow together. It was just all very like, just, God, it was, was very like 2020, it was, wasn't it? It was 2020. Yeah. It was very cobbled together. It just wasn't, wasn't great. And from there, that's when we all kind of, kind of sat down and think, okay, how can we fix this? And what's like the, the best way to go forward in terms of designing levels. And from there, it was like, you know, that's pretty much what kind of ushered in the the newer version of Freight Frenzy, which is the one in the final game, which actually has more of a fo- has more of an actual focus in terms of a level gimmick. It has more like it's it, it's more like interwoven with the level design. It doesn't feel like it, it like it doesn't feel like it's all kind of like cut up and stitched together and all that. You know, awesome, Kevin. Did you have another question you wanted to ask? Yeah, what led to the art style that was used in the cut scene? I I heard like there were like a bunch of artists that were hired yeah, there, there for were, that part. Yeah, there were plenty of artists who worked on it. Um, initially, uh, our main artist, uh, Code, uh, Code Trilogy or Code Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, you know, he's he's incredible. He's an incredible artist, and it, he started out like when he was like sort of really coming into his own as an artist. Like he he um. Like he initially, like there's very early versions of the cutscenes that have like a lot, like much older art that he did, um, and uh, it it's sort of like a lot of the scenes are sort of refl- like a lot of the scenes that he did are sort of reflective of um his of his kind of art style, which is more like this kind of very um he's he, like I'm I'm very bad at describing two D art, but he, he's it's very much more of like the kind of um like. It's very like Spider Verse style, kind of in a way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's much more comic booky. It's very, it's very. Yeah, like, it in the initial, uh, in the first uh, couple of, uh, I guess, issues he drew, he, uh, yeah, he really went with that comic book style. Yeah, uh, uh, but even now, like he, uh, he really, um, he had like a lot of, like, like now there's like a lot of like striking colors and a lot of like very kind of like very like striking imagery as well. Like very like complex, like a lot of complex stuff going on. That's what really, that's what really um, gave it a specific art style. And that's obviously what also gave, gave birth to that meme. Go around on Twitter. Like he drew that, uh, Goku Ziva. Which was all, that was all his idea, by the way. Like we, we just sort of said, Oh, just in a panel of Sonic looking angry. And he just drew that. And it's like, Okay, I guess we're using that. Sure, why not? Uh, <laughs> but yeah. um, and uh, from there, so yeah, he was the main art. He is the main artist, but also like we had like tons of other artists doing other scenes. Like uh, one, of the second biggest one for sure was definitely uh, JJ. Uh, JJ sucks a lot on Twitter. He's um, he's also incredible. Like he did, he's like he's kind of 
um, comic book style as well was incredible. Like the sketches he does, like the the amount of stuff he did was insane as well. And he he did a lot. Of, he did like the second scene with like Sonic fighting Infinite in in Green Hill. It was it was all um, like. And um, a lot of it was, uh, it, it's a big kind of, it, it doesn't have a consistent art style, I feel, overclocked, because it, it's, it's got um, a lot of different artists from, that we kind of pulled from a lot of different places, right? So it's, no, it's not really one particular style, aside from like the editing of it with like the color book panels. It's more of, um, it's, it, it feels like it ends up feeling more like it was kind of a, it was more like, um, well, like a community project in a way, because you have all these different artists from all these different places with all the, all their own styles, like coming together to like chip in for like a like a scene, you know. And that sort of it gives it gives a little bit of variety. It, it's not really it's not very consistent, but it you know gives a little bit more visual variety to each scene. And yeah, I gotta say, like huge props to all the artists that worked on the, on the cutscene. That was like one of yeah. my favorite aspects of the game. I, I love the art style that that no, was they, they, there. They, yeah, they really killed it. Yeah, like we like initially like well, our structure for it really was just um they they were really because they kind of had to just draw from our descriptions. You know, they were the they were the real ones. Like we we give them the outline and say for each panel and say okay, so you know uh. Have a panel where, like, try to think of one in particular. Um, have a panel where it's like you know um, Eggman facing down Infinite or something like that. You know, like in the second scene, and he'd have to like he pretty much have to draw from there, and like you know he'd add like his own uh, like it's it's all up to these artists to actually like visualize it and add their own creative flair. That's what really. That's what gave life to that create to that vision, and that's that's what's all incredible about all those artists is that they managed to, you know, really they managed to work with us really well and managed to create something, you know, really good. So yeah, awesome. All right, I'll ask one more question before uh, turning it over to the audience. Um, mm-hmm. What sort of inspired um, the choices with the avatar levels? Uh. In what particular way? Um, specifically with like the avatar, how working with it uh, to with differentiating it from a lot of Sonic's gameplay, a lot of it enforces us dealing with the Wispin. Um, mm. How did you go about uh, maybe adding more like more additions with the Wispin powers to differentiate the levels and encourage replayability? I well, I think yeah. this was something Mike and I discussed when we when we were really starting to work on a Freight Frenzy. Like, yeah, especially with the Wispins. It's it, um, one of the one of the definite things we said was to not have them be like forced for progression, right? Like yeah. we said, you shouldn't have to use them if you want to like play the level. Like as 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 in like you can not as in like you, you don't want to use them to like you don't want to force the thing. player to use them to progress because and on top of that, um, there's just so many different ways to use each Wispin that yeah, it'd, it'd be impossible to force like the player to. Progress. Like right. it, it's yeah, and so instead, like the idea was, give each wispon, like give well, give some wispons, but most wispons its own kind of particular um, uh, its own like g- give them individual shortcuts throughout the level. Like in um, like Duck mainly did this. Like it was um, there are these cannon, there are these burst cannons, like from Sonic Colors DS, where it's like you jump in them with burst and it like just fires you out. Or there's like void, ca- there's like cables void. for the void yeah. power up where it's like you, it's all, it's almost like the, it's like laser. a laser from Sonic Colors where it's like you shoot into it and like you travel through these pipes and then you end up on the other side. Similar with drill actually. And yeah, that yeah, was, um, drill and void work the same way. So, so that was the main thing. We, we didn't want to force the wisp ones down your throat, but we wanted to give the options for players to use them. And it actually ended up working out all right in terms of the ranking system because the ranking system is like fully time based. And basically, we, we designed the ranking to be completed without Wispons, so the Wispons can be used as a tool, as a means to actually clear it in a certain time, like kind of like be creative and clear it under a certain, like, like speed up your playthroughs. I think, a, time. I think a good thing we did with that too is that they're not necessarily required to give you an S rank, they just make it easier to, easy to get the S rank. And yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously, yeah, the speed run better as well. Um, but like you, 
uh, Kelp, you said, uh, you know, is um, how you differentiate it from Sonic? Uh, the thing is, like when we were designing it normally, he's we kind of had to make it a, like more like how modern Sonic played because he's very um, – because he, he already is very much like him, you know? Like, he pretty much – like, he controls pretty much the exact same. Like they, I, they, feel, they, I, I feel yeah. like we might have made it a little bit more platforming-focused because of the, like, I think uh, wire what hook. we did – well, what we did, because we, we didn't have a boost to compensate, right? And the boost is – because the boost is such a big focus of the gameplay. So, obviously, like, at that point, when you remove the boost, what do you have? And that was sort of one of the big problems with um, the Avatar gameplay. So, what we, what we did was – the focus became more on the on the level gimmicks because yeah. throughout throughout each level, this was part of the design document we had. We wanted to kind of have an actual like a proper um, like central like a singular central gimmick throughout the stage. So okay. like especially because uh, for the base game didn't even really do that in half the stages. Like Red, uh, Park Avenue doesn't even have like anything unique about it. Well, yeah, it was pretty much we, with the Avatar. We we focus more on that side of things, where it's like like freight frenzy. Like a lot of it is like switching to get out of the way of trains. Like the trains are a big, big gimmick, right? It's like you know switching to get out of the way of the trains. Like like running on top, like quick stepping on top of them, like jumping ahead of them to avoid them, and like all that. That's that's there to sort of like kind of enrich his gameplay a little bit more uh, compared to songs, I guess. Not to say that songs levels don't have their own central gimmicks. It's just that with the avatar, we had to kind of focus a lot more on the level design, giving more uniqueness than and like giving more substance to the gameplay over um, over modern Sonics. And like same goes for Dead Atmosphere, where it's like uh, there we use like two kind of central gimmicks that sort of like came together as well, like um, like the van, like the the well that kind of we can talk about that in a second, but um, the um, the vanishing platforms was one of them and also like the laser gates and those come together later in like a later section where it's you're like you're uh, running on panels avoiding the lasers you know it's what it is it's it's kind of going back to the old to the old like Miyamoto how to design video games kind of thing like the, like what Mario does where it's like um you have you, you do the approach where um you you have like a, a level gimmick for each level. And in, in that level, it sets up the gimmick initially in like a safer environment. And then throughout the level, you keep building on that gimmick and you keep using it in more like dangerous situations so that the player will like continually like understand the gimmick, understand how it works and eventually be able to master it. And that, that ultimately not only like um, it, not only like as a challenge for the like a unique challenge for the level, but it also makes the levels a lot more memorable in that way. Like people will think of Frey Frenzy and go, "Oh, that's the train level," you know. And that was the main like trying to like give it, give the levels their own unique identity was a big focus for Overclocked, especially for the Avatar levels. And that was definitely a thing that like that that design philosophy was something that allowed us to do that. Absolutely right. With that, I'll kind of open up the floodgates to the audience. So, if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand and we will call on you. Um, Kevin, you want to go ahead and call on the first person? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see, I believe Dino Kaiju had their hand, hand up first. So I'll call him up. All right. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Whoa. Hey there, Dino. Yeah. How are you doing? I just blow my eardrums out. Oh, what? You're, that's you're all right, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll ask a question. You got it. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Okay. So, uh, first up, before I get to my question, um, Overclock so far, from what I've seen, um, it's really looking like a great project. I mean, it already is. Like, even after it released, like, um, like, um, like it got like a lot of attention. Like, even like from the from the sonic community and even the modding community like uh, i don't know if anyone saw the steam charts but it got like a lot of uh, attention yeah. that people got the game <laughs> yeah, it's a bit crazy yeah yeah which is insane <laughs> but anyway um my question is, is actually this um uh it's actually around the uh the voice actors for uh, mm. the characters like um um were were the people of Adrenaline Doves like the first options for the cast of uh, most of the characters, or were there other options before before they before they are uh, casted? 
they they sort of came to us in a way. I'm not going to get too into it because it involves uh, um, somebody they want to distance themselves from. But uh, they uh, basically what uh, happened was um, they re- this uh, member of the team reached out to us um, and then basically got us in contact with like Landy and the rest of the Adrenaline Dubs team. And from there, yeah. I guess we sort of just. Essentially, they were the first options. Like they, yeah. they pretty much. That's that's who we went with, and uh, they're all. I mean, they're they're all a fantastic cast, and they're fantastic people to work with. They're all really talented. Gen- like genuinely, some of the best people I've ever worked with. Yeah, like Landy, Ryan, uh, Hyper VA. You know, all that. They're all they're all incredible. Pe- they're incredible people, they're, and they're even more incredible voice actors. So, I really, I mean, there's like and. <laughs> There's really no other really. There's no other picks really. I mean, there was some. Obviously, there was some, there were some people who weren't a part of the adrenaline dubs that we did use for the project. Like we have one of them in the room with us right now in the audience, James James Digit, who or maybe I'm I might be butchering that last name, but he he did Infinite, um, and he's he's bloody incredible. He's he's insane uh, what he does. Um, and he, he did a really good performance for Infinite. And, uh, yeah, he, he wasn't from Adrenaline Dubs, but, um, you know, it, but, yeah, mainly it was Adrenaline Dubs, yeah, who, yeah, did the voice cast. Ah, nice. But, yeah, because when I'm hearing, like, seeing the cutscenes, like, I instantly recognize a lot of the, the voices, like, especially, like, yeah. Landy as Sonic and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, he's got a- Neo Metal Sonic as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got, a, he's got a very unique voice for sure, like, in terms of... Like in the like wider community, like he has a very like he is a very kind of unique particular voice that like people know and they 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 can easily identify because because of those comic dubs. Yeah. Um. So kind of also attaching overclocks. That's pretty uh pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, I think yeah. one of the things that like helps Landy to stand out so much is that he's what he does with Sonic is, is so unique and so so cool how he like makes it his own that it like yeah, makes he's him- not really like doing like he doesn't sound like Roger but that's obviously yeah. on, pu- on purpose he's not doing really anyone he's not really like trying yeah. to do it in per- like obviously he'll take he'll take cues from other voice actors right but he's yeah. he's he's primarily doing his own thing and what he do- like his own thing is still very good you know Absolutely, absolutely. That's like one of the more things that like, even I try to do when I when I do voicing is like you know you want to try to do something, but you want to try to make it your own so that that way yeah. it's not like something that's been done before. And Landy does that incredibly well, and I think in, uh, Forces Overclocked is some of the some of the best work I've heard from him in in recent times. Yeah, I mean, obviously he does fantastic work with adrenaline dub stuff, but like 100%. his work in, or, in Overclocked is awesome. Oh yeah, well, it's also reason. good. He. <laughs> Yeah, it's also good that he's also uh, we got him to be Neo Metal Sonic as well. Actually, that sort of initially in Adrenaline Dubs, it was it was a different guy who voiced Neo Metal Sonic, but we got him to do we got Landy to do Sonic and Neo, kind of as a callback to uh, to Heroes because in Heroes, Ryan Drummond actually he voiced Sonic and Neo Metal Sonic, so we figured, hey, that is why don't true. we just get Landy to do that as well? Yeah. Right. And you know what? It ended up being a pretty good choice because I reckon he's uh, he does a pretty darn good in the you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for the question, Dino Kaiju. See you guys later. Thanks, mate. See ya. Yeah, and I want to say like huge shout out to uh, everybody at Adrenaline Dubs and James mm-hmm. Idiot down there in the audience. They're, they're all wonderful VA. Very, very talented. Yeah, Incredible, absolutely. Yeah. James, you killed it with uh, Infinite. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah, people are like, is this, is this the guy? Is this like, the real guy who voices? And it's like, it's an incredible impression. Yeah. There were times when I heard when I heard the cutscenes and I was like, did, did they get the actual like infinite voice actor to do this? I, I was <laughs> taking the same thing. <laughs> But yeah, absolutely. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, read a text question here mm. um, that we got from Cookie Star. Um, right. Cookie Star asks, um, it says, hello, happy 2024. Hope you're doing amazing. As for my question, what were the most difficult challenges you guys had during the development of Overclocked? Which I think we kind of went over a little bit, but... Um, kind of went over that a little bit, yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, it's just mainly... Uh, time and, uh, just a lot of, um, uh, yeah, again, like we talked about it, like trying to actually get like the design actually realized and like trying to figure out how we design all the levels and all that. Sorry, my voice is, (laughs) 
I need some water. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, if we were to say personally something that was that we struggled with, like for me personally, I think just putting together like set pieces and custom objects because sometimes force, uh, oftentimes forces isn't very reliable in the way it works. Nope, um, it's very inconsistent, especially like, with the tools we had to work with. Like the tools were very like. They're, they're kind of older tools that weren't I've like, had, like moving platforms that are just like like they're just supposed to move in a straight line basically i've had them randomly start spinning for no reason like it, i mm. have to like completely like recreate the object setup just to make them stop doing that and i don't know why it does that but they do and it was <laughs> very 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 frustrating for me yeah so stuff like that was really like i mean we obviously yeah we went over the design document and all that but it was all um uh just trying to get it all working and flowing with forces and also like play testing, like making sure that we weren't designing something that was totally like unfair or like hard to play. Like that was another thing that we really had to, um, that we really had to focus on. Awesome. All right, Kevin, you want to go ahead and call on the next guest? Yeah. Um, both the, and unfortunately the rest of the name has cut off there. So uh, we'll call, call them up next. Hello. Hello. Hey. hey. All right. So my question was, I originally I thought Sonic Forces Overclocked was a DLC because it had because I literally originally thought it was a DLC, but like no, an official DLC. DLC. Yeah, that's originally what I thought, but it wasn't. Mm. But um, like how? That's just my words here. Um, Did you want us to come back uh, when you form when you when you're able to like have, when oh, okay. you came up with the whole idea like. What were your thoughts on the when it was finished? What did we think when it was finished? For me, I feel like I'm like really like I I wasn't there for a lot of like the last couple of months of development just because of both personal stuff and like admittedly just a lack of interest. I sort of got like a bit of burnout, but Mm. I think I'm very, very satisfied with what we did and I'm really proud of everyone who worked on it. And like, cause like if it wasn't for like everyone else who sort of joined me on this project, I don't think we ever would have gotten it done. So no, no. Uh, my thoughts when it was done was just, Oh Lord and Christ, thank the heavens. It's over. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think that's how we all feel when we do a uh, new development. <laughs> huge, mate. You have no idea. Five right? years. It's, yeah. It's editing, my- programming, all that stuff. It takes a lot of time and work. Oh my! You don't know the half of it, but no, yeah, it was. It was just. I mean, it was just really good to actually be like have it all done and have it all out there and have you know the community backing you in a way. It's it's um, it was uh, yeah, it was. It's definitely like like Doug said, it was just satisfying to be uh to be out of the woods and um, it uh, yeah, it's definitely a major thing that in my life that I'm I'm just you know I was glad that it's. It, it's great that it's all finished and like, you know, we, it's that it's finally, yeah, it's finally done pretty much. And that, um, you know, it just means I've got a lot of free time now. Awesome. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And that answers my question. I'm going to go and head back down to null space. <laughs> on, say hi to Neo and infinite for me. <laughs> they're right. back in null space. Yeah. They're just chilling. <laughs> I, don't even know right. I'm gonna, um, yeah. I think I'll go ahead and call on the next person. Let's go with, mm-hmm. uh, Let's go with Radar. Hey there, Radar. Hello. Hey, Radar. Yo, what's up? Uh, this is weird. The invite <clears throat> to speak thing is still up on my screen, even though... Oh, nope, never mind there. Nope, it's gone. Discord being glitchy, as Discord always. Being Discord being yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'd say never change, mm-hmm. but it never will. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, what's your I question? Guess that's just the thing that happens. Um, hi, guys. Uh, huge congratulations on getting forces trending. <laughs> Unreal, right? Oh yeah, I saw, dude. When I saw that, I, my heart like jumped. I was like, oh my god, you got forces oh, yeah. spike in trends and in. Oh my gosh, just uh, everyone joking about the fact that all the sales for forces are going up now. Hmm. Yeah, what's what's got, going on? We got overclocked trending on Twitter for a brief moment, and that just like that's, a bit, that's, a, that's like, enough. Like like that, that. like it really made me happy. We take those. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, I feel like I feel like like a 
couple of hours or so, but it was still cool nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Um, right. My question to you guys, um, overclocked, um, we saw, uh, at least I noticed a whole bunch of like new designed badniks that were specifically made for overclocked. And I wanted to know oh. if, if you guys happen to have a favorite that was made for the mod, because I, 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 I I did make a couple, like, beyond the ones that, well, okay, I made, like, a lot beyond the ones you see in the mod, but um, for the ones you do see end up seeing in the mod, I think my favorite that I, it's kind of hard, like, there's only, there's only, like, three, I think, but I, I think my favorite design-wise is um, Crab Me, but I think my favorite one to implement was the Egg Robo. Mm-hmm. The Egg Robo from Dead Atmosphere, yeah, I noticed that one, I was just like, Wait, that's not an that's not an egg chaser. <gasps> I see that jetpack. Oh my god! <laughs> yep. I, I had a lot of fun with that one. Yeah, like, no, it's good. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Um, I, I remember that you were. Uh, yeah. Um, what was it? Because uh, he. Uh, yeah, and the crab meat. I. Uh, I believe you guys were with um, uh, Landy for a stream beforehand, and. Uh, I heard that there was like a mentioning of the crab meat if it was even like uh, I, I think there was some sort of story you guys mentioned with the crab meat because uh, it was in I, uh, the artwork cut scenes. Oh, yeah. you, you guys mentioned that you didn't know if it was actually in the game. So oh, the, yeah. the yeah. thing with those was I had given like these are like like designs I made in like 2018, but I gave code a bunch of like very early um, designs for bad necks and the ones we were going to include for uh, like so those are earlier designs, but they're they're close enough that you don't really tell the difference. But um, there was going to be crab meat, uh, the spinner and then uh, the um, caterpillar. And I do have a model for the caterpillar. I just I just didn't feel like it. Well, for one thing, there was nowhere to really put it in that stage, and it just didn't really feel like it belonged in Chemical Plant. Um, there was a, I did, there is one other unused bannock that I experimented with for Freight Frenzy, where, which was the, like the Thunder Spinners. So I was going to have like a group of them where, um, like, if, he, if there was like, if you landed in the middle of a group of them, they would all charge up their Thunderbolts, and then it would create like a big vault that would just sort of short out your Wispin for a little bit. But, that, Ooh, oh my God, really, sorry, no, that sound that sounds cool as heck. It just Whoa. didn't really make it past the uh um I guess experimentation phase. I think um I think another part of it was that initially they weren't even in the like you, you came up with designs and they were in the cutscene, but uh, we didn't actually add them in game until like the next like the revised demo, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah they yeah. were just sort of there to originally they were just sort of there to like like show like oh Eggman's army is expanded but then we actually added some of them in the game so that was fun yeah but they are very buggy is the thing with those enemies yeah like they're, they're but very... I'm I'm proud of like, like I'm it, proud of how polished I made I ended oh yeah up 100%. Made. yeah it's as polished as it can be I mean if you ever see any like kind of weird kind of goofy stuff going on with them just not like it's it's just part of the course unfortunately yeah but, uh... yeah no from what I've seen everything seems as uh like clean as it can be like i didn't see any like i didn't see anything weird with the at least you know the newly uh designed bad nicks and everything like mm -hmm. you know yeah every, everything just seemed really clean sorry uh main i'm very invested because i am like a bad nick nerd i love <laughs> eggman's robots and it's just like ah, it you guys put like all this detail into making them like this you know the uh, the forces uh war um, art style with them again the crab meat the egg robo is my favorite we'll say that um i th i think the spinner was in the game i'm pretty sure i it, i it just swear i saw spinner. one spinner's new, uh, brand new mm, yeah they, okay then the I, crab meat was planned for forces apparently but it just it, we don't even know what it looks like so oh uh, you're talking about like in the original game like in the oh okay right yeah well, it's always nice to bring back an old concept for something new, and I think yeah. you guys nailed it pretty much on point. So, thank you guys thank you. for your hard work. You guys, oh my gosh, you guys made something pretty awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, you really appreciate thank that. Good question, sure. Radar. Thank you. Legend, see you later. Mm. All righty. Uh, here's a text question from Trey Thornton. Uh, what is the best thing you've done for Sonic Forces Overclocked? 
what was the best thing we've done for Sonic Force Overlord? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, that's very specific. Is there any kind of... Uh, uh, where's he asking this question in text? I think, uh, we yeah, could, I think we could probably rephrase it a little bit. Maybe well, rephrase it a little bit to something more specific. I Is think it, if it was like, thing, rephrase or? it to um, what was specifically for each of you, what was your favorite thing that you did for Sonic Forces Over? Favorite thing? Um, could just be just about anything, to be honest. Um, could we say favorite level, maybe? I feel like that would uh, sure. make a little bit of sense, initially. Sure, absolutely. Rush. Your favorite level? Well, okay, that might just be my answer as well, potentially. I, um... Yeah, Media Rush was sort of like the final level of Overclocked. That that was sort of the thing I think turned out uh, like the best in terms of um, how it actually came out, I guess. Like it, um, because that was like, that was one of the big, like that, that's definitely the biggest level in the game. Like it's, it's, it's the longest and it's got like the most, it's got the most stuff in it. Like we put the most stuff. Like we just stuffed it all in. Like we just put like a bunch of crap in it, pretty much. And it feels, um, it feels like a constant, like a constant adrenaline rush. And I love that. Well, yeah, um, I, I, uh, cause that that one kind of gave us the freedom to do a lot of different stuff. Like, cause when you're in space, like when when you design a space level, you don't have to worry as much about having the terrain sort of in the environment because it's in space, so stuff can just be floating or willy nilly, right? Yeah, um, weird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's that's uh, what um, kind of gave us the freedom to just create, like, kind of go crazy in terms of adding a lot of alternative routes you could take throughout the level and a lot of different means through which you could actually traverse the environment. Um, and also just the, um, I think just the aesthetic of having the war in the background and having, like, the half-rebuilt uh, Death Egg and all that. And just you know, like run, like running by and like avoiding meteors and all that. That was sort of that's that's something that I think turned out pretty well in terms of what we were making. And yeah, um, yeah it all, like it all just came together. I liked putting dead atmosphere together, like how you can just sort of see like the more broken yeah. down parts of the Death Egg, just sort of like yeah, like sure, caving in. Mm-hmm. That, that was really fun to do, and I think the I think the, the sort of orange fog was inspired by um, uh, Portal and. Uh, was it Portal or was it the Citadel from Half Life? Oh, it was the Citadel. That's right. It was Half Life Two inspired. Um, oh, there you go. And uh, I just think it it feels very like you can tell the Death Egg is like barely holding itself together. So that I think yeah. that was fun. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, I think another thing I, I I just I just personally enjoyed doing like a lot of um just like adding together all the because I'm I'm. Much more of a kind of film editing guy than I am, um, like kind of programming and all that. You know, I um, I you know, I probably enjoyed the most was just uh, kind of sequence, like doing all the sound design, like sequencing it all together, getting the pacing down and all that. And that was because that's something that's something I just really enjoy is just m- like movie editing and all that, and that that's what the cutscenes gave me the opportunity to do. So yeah. Oh, absolutely. As as someone who who. Uh, has done some like film projects and stuff. I, I believe me, I'm I'm right there with you. Yeah, man, it's good stuff. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, 100%. editing can be a pain though, but it is oh, a lot. Of fun. Oh, absolutely! Like there's a lot of like I, the Premiere Pro is just a real. It's a oh. real piece, you know. Premiere Pro, piece. if it if it is ever the testiest of uh, of things to work with, it's it really annoying. Like sometimes, where it, uh, I have to you have to export it in a different way with the media encoder because it's got oh gosh, it, it, it exports it exports like the comic panels like totally off center. You know, it's like oh my god, <laughs> hate it. Yeah, oh man, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, thank you for the question, uh, Trey Thornton. Um, let's go with. Let's see here. I think we'll go with Tailsco. Coming up, Tailsco. Your mic is muted. Tailsco. Oh, there we go. Hello. Hello. Hey. Happy hey. New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Yeah. All righty. So, what's your question, soldier? <laughs> okay. Oof. Oh my goodness. The Sonic Frontiers did have a comma dove, like you know. Hmm. I mean, it looked like a DLC version of Sonic Frontiers. Like the characters, you know, Sonic and Gadget, you know, all the villagers. I mean, I kind of 
like it. It's pretty uh, cool. You mean like um, sort of like what Final Horizon was? Yes. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Did you have a question about uh, Sonic Frontier's <laughs> Overclock or, or is that what you wanted to say? Sonic Frontier's Overclock. Sonic Frontier's oh, Overclock. no. Next project revealed, Sonic Frontier's no, Overclock. Not, I, didn't know, uh, uh, I mean, no. I'm not Sonic. Sonic, Sonic, Sonic of Overclock. Sure. Kevin's, Kevin's classic slip of the tongue. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, but did you have a specific question about uh, Sonic Forces Overclocked? Yes. Okay. Right. Sonic Overclock. Let me see. I did like the art design. Yes, I did like the art design. I think she's asking about the the art design. What you mean, like the like in the cutscene? Yes. Okay. I I think we I think already she's asking about the art art design. Maybe you. Maybe you have a better way of braiding it, Count. Um, well, I think we already answered about the the cutscenes because we talked about those a little bit earlier. Um, mm. But yeah, so we'll we'll move on from this question. But thank you. Um, yeah, we already we already kind of talked about the the cutscenes specifically. Yeah, uh, um, I know Goken had a text question, and I thought one of reply that was uh, it was better to be answered by someone else. I don't know if you two wanted to try yeah. and an- answer it. I think Mike might be able to answer this one. Which which one is this, sir? Uh, it was about the cutscenes, like like getting them into the game. But I I had asked Blue about it, but he didn't. Oh, didn't well, we just on. I mean it's it's not anything too crazy to talk about. It's pretty much just uh, you know just taking um taking the file. We just exported them as MP4s, and then uh, they were converted into this certain into this file format called USMs. Uh, we did that a few times. We had to do like a few different passes and then we just put them again. And that's pretty much all there was to it. We had to like Brandon, like for the, we have, I can't believe we've gone this entire time without mentioning Brandon. Brandon's the third director and he's pretty much also a major member in terms of getting everything together. And he edited the RFL, like get certain cutscenes playing. Um, so we edited that like, se- like we edited the sequence for, um, the uh, like the actual state, like the save file, um, and that uh, uh, that's how we ended up getting the cutscenes to play in that specific order, like after every level and such. So yeah, right. wait, did he do that through the save file or did he do it through the uh, Lua file? Probably the Lua file. <laughs> um, you're probably right. Yeah, it's probably the Lua file. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was both. Mm. <laughs> Bit of both, yeah. Bit of bit of cross, crisscross kind of uh, modern kind of going on, you know. Um, anyway, all right. Well, um, I guess I will go on and call on uh, Cutie Cat. Okay, come on up, Cutie Cat. Hello. Yo, Sonic Fr- Sonic Frontiers overclocked. That's c- confirmed. Let's go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's not. No, it's I'm not, not going to live that down now, am I? No. <laughs> 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 It's another classic Kevin moment that's will yeah, forever the bricks, yeah. enriched in Revo's history. This will never yeah. go. <laughs> yes, it is. I already quoted it. Anyway, what's your question, Kitty Cat? Okay, my okay. Well, nice, 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 nice to meet you, Mikester and Duck Tealer. I I haven't, nice haven't really I haven't really played Sonic Forces Overclocks, but from what I've seen, nice it's, it's it looks really good. My Thank question is. My question is, what what has been what has been the hardest part of working on Sonic Forces Overclocked? The hardest part, yes, uh, it's pretty much just it's just been the level design, really. I think that's been the main the main thing, and also just trying to trying to deal with the limitations of working with with yeah, forces, yeah. really. You know, like yeah, trying to actually get it. Yeah, for me, for me, it was just putting like trying to make all the set pieces work. And I I know if Brandon was here, he would probably have his own stories to tell you about that, but he didn't really. Uh, he wasn't really in the mood to participate, so. Mm. But I, I think I speak for him when I say that, anyway. So. Um, I think yeah, it was again. It was it was about like getting that getting that kind of design philosophy down and making sure like it like that the actual <clears throat> the way the game played actually worked with the level design, and that that was pretty much the primary challenge. I think another thing. Because we, we've we've kind of gone through this a few times, like in terms of like the biggest kind of challenge we had to face for overclocks. I think another challenge we definitely had to face. It's more like it's it's a little bit more script related, I guess. But um, uh, a big yeah. a, a big thing we dealt with. So initially, 
what we started out with, the project was going to be actually like a three ch- a three part story, oh, right? Um, which sounds like a lot, especially considering how much time we spent on this. Um, but basically, initially, yeah, initially, like what's been released is pretty much just was originally going to be like just the first part, right? Um, but we had to um, condense what like. Last year we sort of we sort of figured okay we're probably not going to be doing this three part thing so what do we do do we uh, do we do we split do we just release it in its initial form with with the current story where it's just part one and we don't release part two and three or do we get do we like do away with all that and just try and like have like re, re like shuffle around part one so that it actually has an ending to the story. Um, and ultimately, we we went with the idea of just condensing the story into just one, like smaller thing, pretty much. So that was definitely a big challenge. Was trying to actually like can really condense the script into one like one complete narrative that just like it, it was only like an hour long narrative, pretty much, right? Like it wasn't anything. Like it wasn't going to be as long as it initially was going to be. So we had to really get. We had to really like fit a lot of. A lot, like a, f- a few different like character arcs that were originally like a lot longer into what into a much shorter length of time, and that was definitely a big challenge. And it, it did have its ramifications in the end. Like I think one thing for sure that the the char- like we we initially were going to do like a, a longer kind of character arc between um, Sonic and the Avatar, right? Because there's that there's in the in the game right now there's like that sort of uh, moment where there's a little bit of um, kind of distrust between the two, just because. Um, in, in the current form, it's because Sonic stuffed up and he um, he got the Avatar like thrown into null space. And if he didn't like, um, if if he wasn't sent to the Death Egg, he would have just been stuck there forever. And it, it was all just because Sonic was being a bit, you know, overconfident and all that. Um, originally, that was just going to be like the first thing he would have done in the longer story. There would have been multiple stuff that would have happened that would have kind of like enrich that story arc a little bit and actually give it more of a, uh, give it a better conclusion in the way it is now. It, it's still there, but we will admit that it's not as fleshed out as it definitely could have been. Um, yeah. And it, overall, yeah, it was just trying to like, it was trying to rework like all these levels and like put them in an order that would make sense as just one story that I think that was definitely a big challenge that we faced over the course of the last year of development was trying to actually, you know, make it like one if, if single you, narrative. If you knew everything that we were trying to do with the story, I feel like the current version would make a bit more sense. Like, if yeah, absolutely. Like, like we, we, like, on, like, okay, <laughs> like the the story we have is not really like it's we're not it's not high art. We will admit that. Like, it's it's very like there's a lot of there's problems a lot of stuff with that was it. Last minute, sort of, I guess. A lot of a lot of expositing because we had to uh, really sort of make the stakes of the story clear. Um, in a way that was kind of in in the quickest, easy way we could have, um, and one of, and like you know, it, it all ended I think, up. I think a lot of what Neo Metal and Infinite's plan that he mentions was going to be is sort of to- shown through like environmental storytelling in this yeah. one Which is rather still than easy. like. It still is to to a certain extent, but like it's definitely not. We didn't push it as far as we originally were going to, and that's why a lot of elements of the story. Some people have seemed a bit half baked, which is totally fair. Totally get that. Um, it was ultimately just to try and like create one conclusive narrative uh, with the stuff we had. Um, we weren't like, trying, like, like I, we didn't I want to leave wanted, it. Anymore. I had wanted to include the Chaos Emeralds in the finale, but like that was just, I mean, even now that's just not going to happen because it's like, yeah, lack of code modding. But and even, and even then, I don't think we, I think the way the, the ending turned out it's fine without them and yeah. I, I feel like i feel like you know uh, regardless of the fact of the fact uh, of the of that a character in the story literally says oh well it was a little bit anticlimactic but you know yeah. i mean aside from that i feel like it all ended yeah, up I feel rounding like out that. Okay. yeah anyway that's that's our diatribe about the story uh hopefully that answered a good, hopefully that answered the question <laughs> that, that answered the question perfectly awesome awesome good to know all right. Thank you, Cutie Cat. Hear uh, me up here. Have a good day. You too. Fine. You too. All righty. Uh, what else we have? Uh, let's see. I believe Chris and and, uh, and then about the numbers I had his hand up next. 
I will call the back for a question. Chris, a bunch of numbers is coming up. All right. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, I haven't I haven't played Overquat yet, but from what I've seen, it's actually really good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my question was uh, was Frontier was sorry <laughs> was forces al- was forces always the idea, or did you have something else in mind first? It's pretty much always forces. What do you mean? Like what? What, what he's asking is like, would we have worked with? Uh, like generations or unleash first. You I know? think we might have like briefly discussed switching over to gens at the very start of the project, but we just, you know, the idea was mainly just to work with forces, which obviously, yeah, again, we had to work with within a lot of limitations. And honestly, like working with gens probably would have allowed for. It, honestly, uh, I think it might have even on. been harder. So maybe, yeah. but like, you know, I mean, like it was the creative vision was centered around it being a sequel story to forces and it being like, a, like it being the on-call mode for it. So doing it in another game wouldn't really make much sense. Yeah, that makes sense. But I yeah, get it hundred percent. Try it out someday. Yeah, someday. I mean, unfortunately I think the, uh, the sale is, uh, the, the 75%, the winter sale is oh, actually it'll, gone. It'll go on sale probably, again, like any time. Probably gone sale again. 75% off. That was, uh, that was a pretty good bargain. I reckon $10 for, uh, that's not, that's not too crazy. I think, um, anyway, before we go too off topic, uh, thank you for the question, for the question, Chris. Uh, no problem. Hopefully it's been fun. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the question. So we're kind of getting over to the halfway point as of right mm. now. And do we, uh, do we want to do some rapid fire questions potentially, like some yes or no ones, or do you think maybe that's a bit useful? Sure, we can, we can do some. We can do some rapid fire. If Kevin, you want to do some rapid fire, we'll do yeah. it in the chat. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I got, I got a one. Uh, was there something that didn't make it into the final game that you really wanted to put in? Now that's not rapid fire. That's actually an extended uh, question. But um, okay, well, I, I want to answer it. I want to answer it. Uh, you go ahead. I, like I said, like the whole super something thing. Like I was gonna um, like if if I if like we had like unlimited resources and like I could do anything I wanted. The number one thing I wanted to do was give the avatar a super form, have them work with Sonic to defeat Infinite and Neo at the end. Yeah. But obviously that didn't pan out. So interesting. Yeah. All right, I've got two rapid fire questions. So. Uh, the first one is, was there ever any sort of moment where classic Sonic was considered? Yes. For the uh, yeah, actually, he originally was in the project. Um, like, he, we, have a, we have a quote unquote completed stage for him, but that sort of just turned into City Siege, I think. Yeah. So initially he was going to be in the project. Uh, we decided later, we realized uh, we pretty much just put him in the, to the exact same capacity as the original yeah. forces, so we just kind of figured, I, I hey. wanted to do more with him, but it was literally like he was, he was, he made like, he had like one stage in chapter one and two, and that was it, so. Yeah, initially, here's, here's another idea from the earlier script. Initially, there was going to be more of a dimensional merge going on, because this was back Between in the, the day. Classic and, yeah. yeah, this is now back in the day when we... were going to have some involvement, and they would yeah, have exactly. sort of clash against Neo Metal. They would have awesome. been, yeah. They would have been a boss that appears another like because back we're, back in the day we we had more ideas for returning villains. Like initially we had Black Doom coming back, which was definitely oh, yeah. Oh, and about the dimensional merge thing, I in an earlier version of Eclipse Forest, um, like sort of like the I guess version two, like version one was that demo released in 2019, and then version three is the current. But um, there were like I had made Studiopolis assets, and they like you would have just seen like messed yeah. up studiopolis stuff just sort of like the idea the idea there was that it would be like with this whole dimensional merge going on you're seeing elements from the classic dimension just appear now in the modern one so like yeah there's just studiopolis things coming in from from the from the classic dimension this I was green hill might have was, had some mirage saloon elements but i don't remember. maybe but this was this was way back in the day before we before like they retconned it again where it's now like classic modern timeline it's just one timeline instead of the whole dimension thing and um it uh i mean it was mainly just to give classic more of a presence and a reason to be there but ultimately we just decided nah i reckon that's um that's something we cut because I don't, I don't think because uh, it, it ended up being better for it because it just meant there was more focus in the game. Like it focused more on on Avatar tag team, you know, and that that was a lot more consistent than just switching over to classic song. Yeah, gotcha. And then my second rapid fire question: uh, Was there any sort of 
original plan to include any of the other Sonic cast as like little side missions. I I had intended for uh, like like I like if we had kept going forward with this, I would have cut some of them. But uh, like the um, Babylon Rogues and General. Or oh Gmural, my goodness! I was supposed to pronounce it. Those are like really early drafts of the script. Those are really early drafts. I think um, one thing. Yeah, go ahead. I think I even got general in the game at one point, but it was just like as a radio thing. <clears throat> yeah, but I think I think that was the extent of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think early on. <clears throat> sorry, uh, one of the things that um, was a, a character that was going to appear that ended up just kind of getting cut fully was Shadow. Right, he was yeah. originally going to be he was going to play a role. Um, he like initially we were going to focus more on infinite wanting revenge against him, but we sort of ultimately decided. What would have made more sense for the story is Infinite doesn't like he doesn't really care about Shadow anymore. He's more so out for revenge against Sonic and, Egg, and Eggman because he feels like and, they and kind the of feel a little well. bit more. And the Avatar, sure. I think I think the Avatar hurt his ego a bit because it's like I just got exactly I just got handed to me by a, a regardless. Like a yeah, regardless, Team Dark didn't make the cut, which you know might be disappointing for some, but. I mean, they wouldn't have done a whole on the story, and um, obviously, play, playable Shadow is not in Overclocked like he like he was in the original game, because then we had episode battle instead. So that was sort of a yeah. It just would have just been hard. Like I had a whole arc plan for Shadow, but it would have just yeah. been like impossible to implement with the way the game just, works. Just impossible. We we will. I, I think we are going to do like an extended behind the scenes thing, like talking about like all these early scripts and stuff. So if you if you if any of you have any interest about reading up on that, you know, we. You, just watch that video whenever it comes out in like five months or something, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately team dark just was a casualty of the uh, condensing of the story. You know, they, yeah, they just didn't end up being in it. Awesome. Awesome. It's interesting to know. Cause like, that was one of the things that I was wondering originally was like, I know that the game is primarily <laughs> focused on, on modern and uh, the avatar, mm-hmm. but I know that like in forces, like, a third of the game is classic Sonic. And as much as yes. people may not like the fact that he is there, he is a big part of the game. So for sure. me originally, like I imagine that there was probably something uh, initially with him. Yeah. Yeah. And there was, yeah. But we, we just sort of felt that uh, with that, it's just like, we sort of felt that there was, there wasn't like a whole lot to do in terms of like trying to use, like trying to improve classic Sonic's use and forces, I guess like yeah. the, the, like <clears throat> another thing that uh, Duck worked on mainly was uh, the uh, classic Sonic Improvement mod by uh, Shellen. Um, and that was much more of a, I think that's kind of the most you're going to get out of uh, classic Sonic Enforcers, you know, because yeah. that, that sort of fixes everything about him. Adds a chaos right. flight, which is pretty good. And yeah, I, I, like beyond that, there wasn't really much that much interest in terms of using him. With, with Mon and the Avatar, it was more about being able to create like brand new levels. With gotcha. Him. All right. Well, I guess uh, we'll we'll continue with some with some other uh, yep. rapid fire questions in the in the. Do you want to do it in just the chat, the text chat, or yeah, let's have it. Let's have it. So in uh, our show discussions, right? Yeah. All right. Let's so, get some yes or no questions going. Let's 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 do that. If anyone has any yes or no questions, put them in chat. All right. Rapid fire round. We'll do some yes or no questions in the Sonic R Show discussion chat. So feel let's free go. to. Post some yes on Twitch. If there's any on Twitch, actually, hold on. I haven't seen anything in the Twitch chat. No, uh, like, since we started. So, although if no one's going to yes or no questions, that's fine. Seems like a lot of people have some yesence. Well, that's not good enough. We need actual questions, lads. Yes, it isn't. <laughs> I think they're just going to start a yesent chain. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's just pointless. All right. Unless we do wait. Were there more? Were there more? Kind of. Initially, yes, but not not anymore. I, I, we sort of scrapped episode metal for the longest time, but it came back for uh, we, it just came back to an extra thing. Anyway, were there going to be references? Uh, uh, I think I might have might have like mentioned Tangle at one point, but I I don't remember. That's been so long. So it's a totally different. It's a totally different canon from IDW. Like it, it doesn't work with IDW, or well, at least not with the first arc, I guess. But yeah. See what else we got. 
Side quests would have probably amounted to extra stages. So I, yeah, I but was not really. planning something like that, but it was another thing that was just an idea that didn't get. Yes, there were going to be more boss. There were going to be more boss fights as well, but they we, would have. Been. We have prototypes for bosses, but uh, they, both, <coughs> they both basically became the final fight against Neo and Infinite. Yeah. Yeah, like initially that uh, the final boss was just like an infinite only fight, but then that turned into and one yeah. of them. One of them was like I'll try to make this as brief as possible because rapid fire. What are our thoughts the, on the final boss? Uh, Not for us well, to say, really. Let me let me let me finish this one first. But it basically, yeah, yeah. Uh, it would have been like a fight against like five shadow androids who were defending the Death Egg Core, and that idea is going to get recycled into the uh, shadow fight for forces reimagined. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, final boss. Uh, I I'm pretty satisfied with what uh, Brandon and Mike and everybody else did with it. I and, didn't really uh, yeah, work pretty, on that one. So pretty good music for that too. It was um, basically what happened. Uh, for, uh, we, we're going to just get on this because I figured we talk about this. Um, Frontiers came out while we were making Overclocked, right? And that when when it came out, it sort of raised the bar for boss fly music in the series, right? As we all know. So we decided, how about we just make a vocal track for the final boss? And so that's what we ended up doing. And Zakujo and Contagion, they're brilliant uh, as a pair. They really, they make some amazing music. But yeah. And also, uh, favorite level, probably Meteor Rush. So I think you'd agree, yeah. Doug. Um, has there been any plans to add different avatar uh, species? Yes. Yes, there has been. I, I have had several in development. I've released a bunch of them on Game Arena, but there are, there's like a specific pack for Overclock that I just haven't finished because it's a lot of yeah. work. I think in, in whatever... Eventually, because I are, have like some yeah. really cool ideas. It's just... We, we are planning on making like a much bigger patch for the for Overclocked because there's a lot of bugs we encountered and such. But we, we figured we'd do like a few more enhancements and one of those things was definitely going to be adding more cosmetics, like more co custom cosmetics pretty much. So, yeah. Uh, would you guys ever tackle something this big again? Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Honestly, like, unless like it has like some really good uh, like direction and like we have everything fully planned out before we start, probably yep. not. But yeah, probably not. We'll, we'll join. I mean, like I freelance here. Like I'll join whatever project people want me to. You know, just check check my credits. But um, who came up with Dark Armor Chair? Uh, me. Duck did. Yep. Uh, who composed the new music for the mod? A lot of people. A lot of different people did. Some notable ones are uh, T and H Nebula. He was very good. He did the uh, Solemn Valley tracks. Which are really, really terrific. He um, he really like took the premise really well. Like in the um, the second track, he like incorporated a lot. Like it was like a darkened version of, gr of the Green Hill song, you know. And that he managed to make that like it really fit for the for the level aesthetic. Obviously, and that he's he's a brilliant composer. Um, obviously, we, we talked about Zakujo and Contagion um, in terms of implementing uh, in terms of doing the vocal track, but uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what stage took the longest to make? Um, it's a good question, actually. Stolen Valley. Either Stolen Valley or, well, actually, yeah, I guess, yeah. Because we didn't even finish Stolen Valley until, because we, we, <clears throat> we like entirely reworked the, uh, like background assets for uh, Starlight Zone. So that sort of took up a lot of time. And, like, there were so many iterations I, of it. I haven't, like, like, everything that, like, went to Starlight is just amazing. Like, that was yeah. just now the guy, I, Alvaro VG. I don't know if he's yeah. listening on this, but he's brilliant. He's a brilliant modeler and he did very well on that. Anyways, uh, regarding the cutscenes, was 3D animation considered before going with comic style scenes? No, it was kind of always the comic stuff, but um, it like it started out initially, it was just gonna be, but it just you know, did we? We did we have like, I think a couple people did, but it was just like for me, it, like. It was also, it was like, for one thing, it was quality concerns. And for another thing, it was just like, we yeah. are still like developing this like actively. So I didn't want to like start work on anything if we weren't, mm. couldn't, if we didn't know what we we're going to do with it yet. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it'd be cool to see like a scene in 3D, you know, like that'd be, that'd be a nice surprise. But, uh, you know, I, I think the comics, the comic style is just sort of what we initially stuck with. And that's what sort of what we, um, went with really we um like initially it was just going to be a comic and then i was just like 
Hey, why don't I just uh, turn this into a video real quick? I'm, I'm so glad see. you did that. <clears throat> yeah. No, it's good. It's uh, turned out pretty well. Um, favorite stage, I, Media Rush. Um, th these two questions I can answer, I guess. Um, oh, yeah. What's it like? What's it like to be custom boss? bosses? So with Chaos, um, this was like sort of like the first thing we did. Uh, it was like me and Sean were sort of experimenting. I realized that we can use triggers to just sort of like we can use triggers as like hit points, like as health points and as phases for the boss. Um, and then as I was looking into more stuff for forces, just I started to realize more ways I can exploit the engine, like the moving platform things uh, combined with like, like so gizmos are basically like animated props. They're not great to use, but they get the job done, as you can see with uh, yeah. the final boss in uh, Overclocked. Yep. Um, I think there's a lot we can do with custom bosses, like even like with force of restrictions, it's just uh, when and if we do them is the question. And then um, I would say I would say it's frustrating sometimes, but for the most part, I haven't really had that much trouble working on bosses, ironically. Um, but as for uh, Easter eggs, there was there was a funny one in a Eclipse Forest. I can't remember if this is in the 2019 version, but I had like a little like caveman you could find like caveman avatar you could find frozen in ice in the river what yeah <laughs> and, and what are you talking are you serious yeah I'm, yeah i'm being dead serious ask brandon about it but it, uh well, i think he might have the model still that uh i wanted to add it but it's just like nobody's even gonna find it so mike i have no idea what you just said you sound like you're in a washing machine uh, I think Mike's, Mike's, uh, <laughs> He's, uh, Mike, get out of the washing machine. Under seat. <laughs> so what happens, Mike's, Mike's microphone went into the He's, river with the caveman. sounded like you're in a washing machine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, all right. <laughs> uh, were, there, were there any cosmetics for the avatar that were planned but didn't make the cut? Yes. yes but they're going to be added in a future patch, like Mike was talking about. Yep. I've got do, one. Do, um, yep. Kind of going on the Easter egg train, are there any sort of secrets in the current build that have not yes. been seen yet? Um, and, a, you know, pretty pretty significant one. It's Big the Cat. He is in every level at least once. No one has found him in every level yet. I haven't either. Like, I, I have There's, not found him. Yeah, he's in pretty... He's in, he's in certain spots. We'll, we'll, we'll show him off at some point, but I reckon, I reckon you guys need to... Uh, There's also a couple other things. Like, they're more minor, but you just if you, if you know... If you take your time and you know where to look, you'll find them. There'll be a, there'll be a challenge for, for all those watching at home. Kelp's challenge to you. Find Big the Cat in all the levels if you can. Yep. <laughs> he's in... You're going to have to, like, really search those paths. He's, he's, he's there. When you see him, you'll realize... Yep, that's big. There we go. <laughs> he's in the final boss, too. He's in a very particular spot. All right, Band, you know what to do. You, you know what to do, lads. Let's go. Super big. He's coming in. <laughs> you, can use, you can use the free cam, you know? It's a pretty easy way to cheat it, obviously. <laughs> Although that would be lame. Was nah, Ava's right. question answered? I, I, pen, I penned her text question. I think so, yeah. I, I can't. Um, yeah, favorite we, we lines are. from the story. That was one that was favorite asked. lines from the story. I think uh, it's a cold night to be playing roulette. Mm, yeah. Uh, God, I don't know. Um, uh, Eggman saying "butter bing, butter boom." <laughs> no, <it's not laughs> yeah, too. I like I like that too. <laughs> Sorry, really that I, good. I, um, I think my favorite, personally, from what I saw, was um, was Landy as Sonic saying, "Green Hills looking a lot more like it. you know what? Never yeah, mind." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, know, I don't really have any favorite lines, mainly because I, think I've I think already said the... mine. So, yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. Those are the favorite lines. Um, I don't really got any anything with Eggman. That's pretty good. All three of his lines. I didn't realize actually when I uh, when I. When I wrote, uh, when I had Eggman call Neo and Infinite Dumb and Dumb, I just totally forgotten. Oh, that's like a oh, that's like a reference because you know Jim Carrey's, you know, one oh, of the yeah. Dumb and Dumb. And Jim Carrey's also, uh, you know, oh my blood, oh my god. Yeah. Here's um, one. Uh, was friend. Neo Metal part of the initial plan for the mod? Yes. Um, and yeah. interesting, interesting story about that. He, we Duck actually initially planned him for the story before 
he actually got re-revealed in ODW, apparently. Unless stuff's yeah. lying to me, I don't know. But um, you better not. Um, but, yeah, it was uh, it was Neo to start off with. Yeah, it was like, yeah, the whole thing was going to be like the, the pair up between those two. And, yeah, that was pretty yeah. much it. Interesting. Any questions about any characters, you can, you can go right ahead with them. Um, I think I would say this one. I know you mentioned Black Doom, but was there any other villains that were considered to be added in? Other well, than- this is going to be a funny story. We talked um, about the hard world heavies, and we talked about uh, Shadow Androids being in there at some point. It was but there, there's it was one just- other one, and this is this was just like this was like a very 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 like one of the f- like literally the first day I joined the product. I was just sort of coming up with ideas. Uh, I was going to have like this was well. Um, I was still experimenting with the idea that uh, Eggman was still like sort of in control of things. Like there would have been like some sort of like prototype robots he'd have been experimenting with. And those would have just eventually ended up being the Metarex, but only really in terms of design and name, like they had no correlation or uh, like similarities to like the Sonic X counterpart at all. Mm. Well, good. We didn't go with that. (laughs) Uh, Um, Did you guys plan? Well, hang on. Do you guys have planned to have various endings during development. No, not really. I I had an idea for one where if you don't collect, like I think we, I think at one point we like had like experimented with the idea of actually having to collect the chaos emeralds. Like the chaos emeralds would have been in a null space. Like that's why that would have been a, that would have been a really hard thing to do. I know what you're talking about, where they yeah. just lose. Yeah, and um, if you don't yeah. Get so like if you don't get all the chaos emeralds, yeah, they like the infinite and metal succeed in their plan, and like it's just. The entire I watch that all reality. Yeah, did you? I, I, uh, it's sort of that sort of still happens now, actually, just because of the fact that there's kind of a bug right now where if you accidentally like <laughs> you stuff up, like there's there's a thing like it can happen like very rare, but if you accidentally like stuff up the um the portal transition at the end for the double boost, nothing will happen and it'll just flash to white and you'll die. So yeah, <laughs> tough, tough, pretty tough, but you know. All right. Do you want to go back to uh, like p- people joining to ask questions, or yeah. do you think uh, do we can go good? back to that? Uh, I know we were like two, two out of hand phrase too. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go with uh, Sally Acorn coming up. Sally, I shall receive. Uh, hello, everyone, and how hey. are you today? You doing, doing good? good? <laughs> oh, man, I just gotta say one thing. I, think, uh, I actually saw the uh, the final boss just now. <laughs> yeah. And I gotta say, you guys did raise the bar. Or it was so clean. Jeez, thank you so much. Mm. All right, so, oh, well, I actually had a question, and uh, for the last question, actually, and, mm-hmm. um, hmm. if uh, you would add at something more, or uh, for Sonic Sonic Forces Overclock uh, in the future, which one? When you should try and why? So, like, what what will we add? Yes, it's like more questions, questions oh, more boss fights. I, mean, uh, it, I feel mm. like if we were to add anything, like at all, I feel like the only thing we could add that isn't that we haven't already discussed would just be continuing the original story. But none of us want to do that. So, yeah, mm. well, or that, or potentially like making a proper Metropolis level because we never actually ended up doing oh, that. Really. Oh, yeah, that's fair. But then again, who's really got time for that? So, uh, you know, if there's, uh, you know, I wouldn't really say add more cutscenes because I feel like we definitely got people saying there's way too many cutscenes, which, which, you know, kind of true. But, oh, yeah, I agree. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know in terms of what we'd add. Like, if, I, I guess if we did have the motivation, yeah, I guess we, I, I don't think we'd want to add more onto the story because I feel like it's concluded now. I feel like, yeah, like all, do all I would do. If I like it, most of what we would even be able to do with the story is just extend it a little bit, but that would just sort of draw it well, out. Like, add a little bit more in the middle, but that's yeah. that's about it because it really, it really kind of skips in, in a way because of the way it's been condensed. It really kind of skips the second act. I would just, I would just go into Infinite and New Metals plan a little bit more. I think that's all I would really do. Yes, yes, that's a good, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I see. Yeah, hmm. Well, I believe uh, that is it. It's uh, you guys keep on uh, being awesome, um, and and I love the the music that you guys is added for the game. Thank you. Yep. It's pretty hot. Well, thank you for the question, Sally. No problem. Later.
Later. All right, Kevin, you want to call someone? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I believe Rain Boom was the next person that had their hands raised. Hello, hello, hello. What's up? Hey. What up, Rain Boom? How are you? I'm doing pretty well. How about you guys? I'm all right. Yeah, okay. just sitting here sort of, you know, sweating in my room, but, you know, here's what it is. <laughs> I see. All right. So, Anyway, I have a do have a question for you both, Doug, Dio, and Meister. What was the most uh, uh, progress of uh, any any of uh, music that you worked on that you worked on on the Sonic Forces overlocked? I mean, overclocked. My bad. Wait, what, are you asking? What was the best music, or what do you think our favorite music was? Um, are you asking? Uh, um, are you asking what was their favorite music tracks for overclocked? Uh, yeah. Um. Sorry if I mixed up on my question. That's all right. Uh, I, I'd say the remix for uh, Mini Rush turned out pretty damn like it turned out pretty well. I think I, I, think I have. Well, I think I I really like the uh, confrontation, like the cuts. Like all the cutscene music. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Um, yeah, no. But for stages, I would have to say my favorite stage music. My favorite stage theme is um, uh, uh, Jungle Infernos, and then my, mm. my favorite theme overall is just the final boss theme. Ooh, I like that. It's a pretty amazing how the, the, the final boss music went so well that I was listened to. Yeah. Well, thank you for the question, Raymond. Yeah. It's pretty good. Indeed. So anyway, I'm going to head out and I catch you all later. Bye. It's all going to be a set. All right. um, I'll go ahead and call on the player. They had their hand raised earlier before we went into, uh, before we went into rapid fire. Hello. Your mic is muted. Okay. Does this work? Hello. There we go. Okay. Hi. Nice to meet you all. I am going to go with. Okay, I found my question. That's not the right one. Let me see if it's in my clipboard. All right. Because I suck at speaking, I typed it down. All right. What I said was I know you guys, I know what you guys made was a mod, but with how it turned out, you guys pretty much made Forces a new game, update three, even. My question being. If you guys had any potential game dev advice for someone inspiring to get into the field themselves, I'm an artist, but I want to be able to do more in the future. That overclock inspired the heck out of me. So what's what's the best advice we can give? Um, Yeah, plan. Um, I actually, mine's a little bit uh, bit more complicated, I think. Um, I think my thing really is uh, just... Be careful with what you uh, with what you're setting out to do. I guess in terms of because um, I've seen this with a lot of projects, right? And this was sort of the trapping that overclocked initially fell into. Um, sort of uh, over ambition, right? That can yeah. potentially be a problem. Like, yeah, ambition's good, right? If you if you want to like you know really set out to do something amazing, then good on you. You should you should really uh, pursue that, but you should always kind of consider what's kind of a reasonable amount of work you can do, you know? Like, initially for us, like, we start, like, we, again, we said, oh, this is going to be, like, a three-part story. But eventually it kind of, like, we, we realised this is just way too much work for us. Like, this was just kind of like a hobby, you know? Like, we, this, this is a passion project. We're not, we're not paid devs. We're just kind of, we're just like, a bunch of dudes just making something in our free time. So, just kind of, like... If you're just going to be like saying initially, like, oh, I'm going to make all of this, I'm going to make like, a, like 30 levels, I'm going to like, we're going to create this new like hour long story, you know, it's like, that's really uh, like, that's a really amazing to have all those ideas. But you have to think, I think the biggest takeaway is that you should like think about like reasonably what you can do, you know, like you should think more like, what can I can I actually reasonably get this all done? Like you got you got to really like within think. my limits and stuff. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Because not everyone has you know the amount of time to like make like a massive project. You know, no one has the time. No one has that many t- that much time or resource resources to do it. And that's sort of a a big thing that we kind of came to terms with. Sure, when we had to condense the project, we realized that yeah, if it, it, it was just like much more scaled back, it was it was a lot more reasonable to deal with. Um, but having it be like this long, like three part plan that really was like, yeah, just way too over ambitious. And we just decided 
well, we just opted out of that because we just re- we just realized that yeah, it's just not the way to go. So yeah, that's pretty much the advice I give. Just you know, don't make what you're making too hard to make. Yeah, it's pretty solid advice. Oh my god, I'm playing the game. My bad. Thank you for <laughs> answering the question. No worries. All right, take care, man. You all do the same. You all did amazing. See you later, Matt. See you. All right. All right. All right, Kevin, you want to call on someone else? Yeah. Uh, let me get to the left here, and I will call on uh, Drowdy or Swapit. Hey, Drowdy. Hey, what's up? How you guys doing? No, no, no. Yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing fine. Got done working out at the gym and, and, it, and finished eating dinner. Hell yeah, mate. Mm-hmm. How the gains looking? Uh, heck yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyways, um, so, question is, um, has there ever been a moment where it's like, uh, there's this thing in development where it's like this certain part is like so frustrated that you had to take a break for a while to like to finish the project? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, no. what was it though? Uh, what was this? Uh, thing? I think so my, my breaking point was freight frenzy because like we really, really like worked because like we we submitted to the hacking contest. We really worked nonstop so hard on that to get it perfect and like it especially took a toll on me because i'm not the healthiest person when it comes to um uh managing my uh stress level so i was taking on a lot more than i could chew and uh kind of came back to bite me really hard so that uh wasn't the best idea oh darn yeah uh- I I haven't really had any uh, particular breaking points, I'd say. I don't know. I feel like I've been, uh, you know, fairly... uh, I mean, like, obviously, stuff's been stressful, you know. Um, Had had a lot going on during the uh, final day release, but, uh, you know, it would... uh, Since it's out, like, I can't really say, like, uh, I remember too many times where it's been, like, doom and gloom, I guess. You know, it's all been... uh, Ah. It's all been fairly okay, you know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, if you had any extra questions to ask, you could, you could go right ahead if you wanted. Hmm, extra question. I don't think I got any more questions because I already um, asked the one in the chat before. Yeah, so right. That, like okay. one thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do have, I finally got one. So, um, since I mentioned like, the animal species to be added, have you ever, like, um, thought of, like, adding any, like, variety of, like, such as, like, you know, like, let's say, you know, like, the hedgehog OC, you know, you know how the like, quills are, like, short? Have you guys ever had any like ideas of like adding like an option to like um stretch stretch it or make it longer? I make would, like- but mm-hmm. that's pretty much like never going to happen with the way forces is put together. Yeah, um, we, like, we, like, if, like, if I could, I would. Without we a- could, we we could like add extra. We we can't add extra ones is a thing. A we can't add anything in the there. menu. It's basically, but we problem. can we can like replace stuff, right? That's that's pretty much the thing we can do, and but. Uh, Obviously, there's limitations to that. So, yeah. Like the yeah. only things we do anything new of are like stages, which is a really annoying process. So, most of the state, like pretty much all the stages we did in Overclocked are just going over existing slots. And then mm. the other thing being um, uh, Avatar Cosmetics. That's about it. Mm. I can confirm that even if you do want to like do the whole, like making the, um, let's say, like, you know, my OC, like in this profile picture, for example, I actually did try to make it longer. But however, how it looks, it just looks no, no. <laughs> it, it does not look good. It's because of the model itself. Right. Yeah, like it just wasn't meant to be like that because of this certain model. So yeah, now I understand like what you mean. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank mm-hmm. you for the question, Drowsy. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Have a good day. All right. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and call on uh, System Error Rick. Yeah, I know that guy. Hello. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hey. Oh, hold you're, up. you're still using uh, the classic Sonic uh, improvement mod profile picture. Make it overclocked right now. No, never. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, just want to congratulate you guys. Like, I've been following development for a long time, and it makes me really happy to see it done. Like, Thank and you. see all the things that you've been working on. Weren't you? The, weren't you the one who just, got really uh, upset when we removed when we removed classic Sonic? Was that you? <laughs> no, but okay. I just, I yeah, just honestly, remember, I don't see him working remember you being it. present for that. I just, I just can't so. remember which person it was. 
No. Anyway, I'm, what's your question? Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Right. So, question. Forces you pretty yes. lackluster reptiles have stuck with it. So I want to know what's in part of the original game on this. Ruby. Well, yeah, I guess that. Fan Ruby. Just some, there's some possibilities of what we could do with that concept of like reality kind of going nuts. That's sort of what inspired the whole idea of Encore Mode besides it just being like a palette swap, like having like it, it later evolved into the idea of wanting to have um, like the fan Ruby influence the environment and cr- cr- cause like a bunch of crazy stuff to go to happen, you know? So it's pretty much mm. uh, the big like every big everything you've seen, like everything you've seen overclocked. That's no, that's not just like you know, like you know, in the original game. It's like, oh, this is an illusion. That's not an illusion. That's like straight up the Phantom Ruby manipulating reality. Yeah, it's weird, but you know, it's um, that was a big thing. It's just really trying to like what the big kind of point was trying to uh, use some of those story concepts from forces and like kind of. Go crazy with them, basically. That was sort of the um, initial jumping off point. That's sort of where it all led. That's sort of how it all led up to where we are here. So, yeah. Nice. Ah, cool. Right. Right. I That's really question. don't have any question. questions. I mean, I guess sub no, question no, were there yeah. any. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you, you, no, you talk about it. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was going to ask uh, was Eggman always just playing a chill in null space the whole time? Yep, that was kind of yeah, a big. But, like, an, like, like initially, in the original- story. In the original ch- uh, chapter four, he would have like it's sort of like Mike sort of incorporated this into the very end of the game, but uh, in the in the last cutscene, but um, he would have like come in with this huge fleet of like his uh, like remaining warships, like like Infinite would have had Sonic like on the ground, and then Eggman would have come in and be like, "I bet you didn't expect to see me again." Yeah, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, implementing it, yeah, like we wanted to tie Eggman into the story as a way to. Um, to like to conclude, and also like you know, have him be the uh, the sort of linchpin that uh, kind of holds the story together in a way. Like he he's pretty much responsible for the hero's win in the story. Um, so that I mean that maybe that wasn't always planned, but the idea of having him in null space was always um, that was always going to be a thing. Like that was always the kind of um, the hook for that what for that second scene where it's like infinite. Just yeah, he's just like. As his revenge, he throws Eggman into null space, and yeah, that, that's always been the thing we wanted to do. Well, nice that you have the vision. I mean, mm-hmm. is there any plans to like release that script of or like the original story? It, yes, it was, it was never finished, it, it, but we'll touch on it. We'll do a behind the scenes thing. Probably one. Cool. Anyway, right. thank you for well, the question, uh, bro. Really good. That's all for me. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year and justice for the caveman avatar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is fair. <laughs> hey, Kevin, uh, did you have any more questions? Yeah. Um, James, maybe I would uh, better answer this question since he's in the audience if he's able to come up. But would, would he be able to like explain like what if there was like a particular inspiration but behind like his particular voice for for infinite he can come up i, I can i can talk about that if he wants to because i uh, have some notes about that too yeah sure if he's got any interest i don't know james james you there mate yeah if I james mean, is I, interested we'd be more than happy to have him up uh, he's there i just don't i mean i invited him up let's see if he's there able to come up and hey, he's got his hand up Oh, hey, hey, James. Whoa. Hello. Hey, I, I don't know if you heard, heard my question, okay, or if you needed me to repeat it. Um, if you can repeat it, please. Yeah, uh, was there, like, a particular inspiration behind, like, your particular voice for, for Infinite? Um, mainly there... My take on Infinite is kind of an impression as best as I can for yeah. uh, for Liam O'Brien's Infinite. But uh, mm-hmm. Mike did uh, ask me to kind of change it up just a tiny bit to make it a l- little bit more sassy, honestly. <laughs> and I think yeah. it worked out so much better. Yeah, no, yeah. So, like, for this project, we we did kind of adjust his personality just a little bit um, in like the way the way he had he'd speak, you know. Mm. Um, 
it's because it's much in the original game. He's much more like kind of slow talking and like lofty dialogue, you know, like all that. Um, but you know, instead, I kind of told you, James, to sound a little bit more crazy in a way, you know, and have like yeah. more, more kind of in like you know, like gives him a little bit more of an edge in terms of personality, um, you know, and it has more like a, like more inflections in your voice to make it a little bit more dynamic instead of it being like like kind of like flat, like oh, I'm the generic bad guy, you know, you sound more a little bit more. Um, Give it more energy, you know, because in- yeah. Infinite's... I feel like, Infinite's, it's, I feel like it helps because Infinite seems more interested in what he's actually yeah. doing. Infinite's, l- Infinite's absolutely loving it in this game. He absolutely is loving just tearing people apart pretty much. He's he's <laughs> yeah. getting he's get, getting a big kick out of just, like, kicking kicking the crap out of Sonic. You know, that's um, it's a big thing there, and that's de- definitely came across in your performance. You... you Knocked it out of the park, mate. I definitely <laughs> feel like you made Infinite way more of an interesting character, specifically for me, because like I am a big forces detractor. <laughs> and oh, uh, and uh, his portrayal in the original game was just, in my opinion, uh, the key like de facto image of missed potential, missed opportunity. And with overclocked, like your performance and what you did with the character was just so great. Uh, well, I can't really take much credit for that. It was all up to the writing. Oh, you, and you uh, can take you can take sixty percent, <laughs> man. I reckon that's fair. I'll I'll take I'll take thirty percent. Oh, come on, mate. But uh, oh, honestly, uh, I think it really worked out too because Mike mentioned that like a uh, it would uh, giving Infinite a little bit more sass. Uh, uh, can kind of work so much better in contrast with uh with neo with metal. Neo, yeah. yeah, because yeah. neo metal is more a uh, more flat in delivery, and having we, two characters be flat kind of. We did, yeah, really we work. we did sort of run into that issue early on when we were revising the script. We're like, okay, we just sort of have two very kind of because they're two very like in their original portrayals, it's, they're almost like this, they're very similar in the way they're like kind of maniacal, kind of clo- like very lofty dialogue villains and all that, you know, like in, um, in a way I sort of wanted to like, this was like, just when, like right before, like we fully redid the script. I wanted to make Neo the more cocky one sort of like, so like he had a little bit of Sonic's personality in him, but like with Eggman's true. brain, mm-hmm. but that didn't really ever amount to anything. Yeah. Well, the reason, yeah. So the giving infinite, that more kind of distinctive kind of chaotic energy to him. Yeah. That, that helped create, contrast between him and neo yeah and it's like it also neo, brings him closer to the way he was written in like the uh prequel comics for forces infinite yeah 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 um it, like it, it helps um like for neo he's much more of like the cold like calculating robot you know like he, he like he doesn't like even make a grunt or like make any like normal like living living being sounds you know well like, mm. and that in turn, that like infinite is more like he's more like the rabid dog out of the two. You know, he's more like he's got. You know, it, it helps like create the con- like infinite is the bronze and Neo's the brains, pretty much. And that's pretty much that's all assisted by uh, obviously your voice delivery and also um, Landy's performance as Neo. Definitely, I, I told him, I like I told him, yeah, you got to really sell it. Like you're just like a really like emotionless robot, you know, like sound, sound really menacing in that way. And that, that helped create like a, that helped create the dynamic between the two villains. And yeah, turned out pretty right. I'd say, you know, anyway, um, (laughs) uh, what do we reckon? Yeah. So that that was my question. I don't know if you had any other questions before we call up the, the next person had the hand raised. Um, yeah, I actually, I, I did have one, uh, but first off, thanks James for indulging us and coming on up. Oh, thanks for having me. I kind of wasn't really prepared, but, uh, this, <laughs> no, well. that's you always the thing, Rebo. <laughs> you can be prepared or you can never be prepared. There is no in between. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your incredible voice work on this project. Oh, thank you. All right. Um, my question kind of stems into like the the music actually the mm. music aspect and I know it may not be the best question for you guys but um uh 
I think one of the things that I always find interesting is how the music kind of remixes some of like the original forces uh, mm. music tracks and yeah. like does them in a new way. Like specifically with um, with Freight Frenzy, I really like uh, Freight Frenzy's soundtrack. Um, yes, I think I'd that say, was the only one. What was, what was kind of the idea behind some of that? Well, uh, initially that kind of came from the encore mode idea of having like these be remixes of previous levels, right? Um, so we just figured like, yeah, I like just having like the music be remixed was just to kind of mix up the experience was sort of always an idea from the get go. Um, I think we, Freight uh, Frenzy was like, the, at least the instrumental for Freight Frenzy was the only one that wasn't actually made for Overclock. Yeah, initially that was made for... Uh, that was just made by Landy as like a thing before, you know, but now it's, um, you know, it ended up being used for this, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, like the other remixes, um, obviously some remixes are more complex than others. Like some, some are more similar, some change, like the sunset Heights one, the city siege, that one's like a lot more similar, obviously with plenty of creative flourishes in there. But, um, I think uh, yeah, it's it's definitely to varying degrees on the origi- on the originality of the remixes. Um, but uh, you know, um, I think initially we didn't really think about having original tracks in. Like um, originally uh, for Stolen Valley, for example, it was just uh, we were just using aquatic bass, you know, because we just figured that would fit. Um, and it, 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 it ended up being like the bass plate for uh, what would eventually become. Uh, the final song, like it was it, that, like Aquatic Bass very much inspired the final version of the Stolen Valley track. Um, but uh, overall, I mean, I guess it wasn't like in terms of what the thought process was behind the remixes. There wasn't much beyond just trying to like invoke the original level, but also like trying to make it something new in the process. Gotcha. Yeah, I just I always find it interesting because and it makes a lot of sense when you when you went into the fact that this was kind of inspired by like the by the encore mode Mm -hmm. uh, with mania and how like encore mode kind of incorporated certain stuff where it changed up the levels even slightly or even like a slight little bit Um, that I can definitely see how that how that uh, Mm -hmm. plays into effect there. Yep. Um, But yeah, thanks for answering that. Uh, I think. Kevin, we've got we've got time, I think, for the those last two hands that are up yeah, there. Yeah, so we'll we'll take those last two questions. <laughs> I believe uh, Mario t- time to knock a had had their hand up first. I'll call him up first, and then we'll call up Radar before wrapping really, up. Really bring on another dev into the thing. <laughs> That's incredible. Hi, Mario. Hi, Mario. Um, so I know this is cheating technically because Honest. I wrote kind of but. Just for a bit of clarification for anyone who just for clarification for those who don't know, Mario is actually one of the uh, another dev on Overclock. Uh, no, he's not. Who is this like, guy? I've never seen this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all the sound, like a ton of the sound design, like place, like modding in the sounds and all that. Legend. Yes, that is me. Thank you again for having me. Um, it's been amazing. Um, I did want to pick your brain about something. How did you stay motivated for four years of, you know, doing this off and on? Because with with off Sonic projects, it's easy to, like, you know, get burned on because you're small and Mm. you have tools that don't work or whatever and stuff like that. So how did you, like, keep yourself motivated to keep going for these last, I'd say, four years? Yeah. Uh, I just, well, I just sort of knew that this was sort of something I was passionate about and I just sort of wanted to keep it going. You know, I didn't, uh, there was obviously there's no like external kind of reward for getting it done. It was just sort of purely out of just uh, passion for the project. So like it was just like because we started it so many years ago and we just sort of wanted to follow through with it. And that was ultimately then just wanting to kind of see that creative vision come to fruition. It's a bit of a rhyme there. Uh, just having that all having that all done was sort of the, the thing that I really wanted to see fully finished, and that ultimately. Is what um, that was sort of the thing that kind of kept me going throughout the four years making this project was um, you know wanted to see that get done forty years yeah but yeah no it's uh, it's all it's all a bit crazy it's all a little bit surreal that it's finally finished but you know right well just so you know people do love 
SFO. It's amazing. It's an amazing achievement <laughs> that you actually got this finished. Mm. And don't let anyone take that away from you. Like, again, yeah, yeah, it is an amazing that's, it's all good. experience. Yeah. yeah, that's also that's part and thanks to you, Mario. So I uh, will give you. No, give you no, the no. It's, it's, it's all you. Because, again, <laughs> when I started being on the project with Freight Frenzy, I had some idea of what I was doing. Like, most of my experience came from, came from generations. And I was just like, what if like I could get through, if I could get through the force and it actually did because that's how something team actually set it up and I just we just went along with that. Exactly. There you go. It all turned out pretty dang well. All right. All right. Well thank, thank you, you Mario. Mario. No problem. Have a good one. So I, got, I think we've got time for one more question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you want to call up uh, radar? Yeah, I'll call up radar. <laughs> Hello, Radar. Hello again. Uh oh. Did Discord do the thing? Uh, I know how to fix it. Oh, nice. Um, um, uh, invite, him, invite him back. This happens like once a panel. Sorry, sorry about that. There we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so completely sorry about that. I don't know what happened to my mic there. Um, but <laughs> oh, good. I, 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 sped, I sped run and fixed it. It was that simple. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, so. We're ending this off with me, I suppose. Uh, okay, then. <laughs> um, well, then I just I get I guess the question I want to ask is merely just to hope you guys can, like, flex the skills that you guys acquired through uh, overclocked and uh, <laughs> just just show just show off for this one question. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you guys what aspect of overclocked surprised you guys like? Like, what did you guys implement in the mod that exceeded your expectations when you first designed slash concepted it, if that makes sense? I think, in a way, uh, the entire mod for me. Like, that's very funny, okay. but just like, because like, originally, like, originally, I had no idea what I could possibly do with forces, especially because, you know, nobody was really modding it at the time. It was forces. Yeah. Um... But like literally, if like I would not like back when I started, I would not have believed anything that we have done in the current version of the mod was possible. Like I didn't even know that we could like. Uh, I mean, I was very like I was like brand new to modding at the time, but I didn't even know that we could change textures. So, uh, in terms of something that turned out uh, well on my end, uh, I, don't, I it's a tough question because I don't know. There's like a few things I'd say. Yeah, this turned out good, or you know, I, I think. Um, Goodness me. Um, uh, God, I'm really, really stuffing up with this question. Sorry. Uh, huh. I think that surprise in terms of coming out well. Uh, I think the way uh, – I kind of enjoyed the way – like having it all kind of come together in terms of – I might just be repeating Duck's answer now, but just having like the stages kind of flow together with the cutscenes cut scenes and all that. Sort of turned out pretty alright. Oh, yeah. Like I, initial, well, initially, like we we didn't really get them in until like much later on. Like, well, like we didn't mod the scenes in until later. So actually, then having it all in and having it kind of actually properly operate and flow together, was sort of like good thing to see actually turn out. And it turned out pretty alright. So yeah, I think that's uh, something. I think that's that's what I'd say. I reckon. <laughs> Just all right. You guys made something. Uh, insert good, great. Awesome, outstanding, amazing from Sonic Colors. You guys just, uh, like, I, uh, like, a lot of the people who, uh, I know who, I saw, like, I saw a whole bunch of streams and everything, um, you know, from people like Fidel and Sam Procrastinates and everything, like, they, like, they're just blown away by all that you guys have done. And honestly, we all can say the same. You guys just knocked it out of the park. Just, so thank you, yeah. Matt. Really appreciate thank, that. No, no, thank you. Thank you guys for even like going the extra mile of finishing uh, all this. It's just people have a reason to like forces. Sure. But honestly, yeah. like, it's still kind of unreal to me that it's out. Yeah. <laughs> it's always that shock when you've, you know, you've worked on something for so long and it's like you get to finally just put it out there for someone to like. Yeah, exactly. Again, thank you guys so much. All right. Thank Have you for the question, Radar. 
Hi, guys. Woo! All right. Cool. All right. Well, I guess that sort of caps us off there. Yeah, that'll do it for uh, for this panel, though I will kind of end it on one final question, uh, and that is, uh, what's, what's sort of next for you guys? Well, I I'd say... I'd say the next thing is just mainly working on the patch, you know, like just, just getting, uh, cause we definitely did run into it. We'll see a fair share of bugs from a lot of the people playing a lot of bugs reported to us. So that'll, I think that'll definitely be the next thing with a few extra little enhancements, like potentially some, uh, new cosmetics, like duck said and, uh, stuff like that. I mean, nothing huge. Like I, I wouldn't from this next patch. Yeah, I wouldn't like expect like a massive content patch. Like, it yeah, content. So, so, it's not going to be DLC for the DLC, you know? It's going to yeah. be pretty um, <laughs> pretty small and pretty compact. But I reckon um, be on the lookout for that if you want to play, like, the final sort of... I guess yeah, I guess I would just say it. look out for re- more stuff from Reimagined in the next, like, year or two, and then that'd probably be about it. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, taking time out of your day to join us and to talk about this project. You guys did an amazing job. Like everyone who worked on this did an incredible job. Uh, It's extremely cool to see a mod like this fully completed and released uh, for the world to play. It's, it's, it's extremely awesome to see. Um, It it just, it's really always a pleasure to have uh, creative fan games and fan mods showcased here. So thank you guys for, for coming over here and, and no chatting worries, with us about it. Thank you for having us on. It's really yeah. appreciated. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Uh, Kevin, did you have anything else you want to say? Uh, yeah, I uh, thank, thank you too. Uh, very, very much for, for coming again. Congratulations on the fan game delete. And thank you everybody in the audience for, for coming. Give them a nice round of applause. And yeah, we have Cartoon Knight. Uh, on Friday at the audience for request. Uh, that's the first of the year. And the next scheduled panel is uh, Sonic and Tails m- move in. Uh, that's Saturday at, at 8 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time. So, yeah. Right. See you on Friday, Friday for Cartoon yeah. Nights. Uh, Mikester, Duck Dealer, if you have any other uh, final things you'd like to say, feel free. Uh, shameless plug, follow our Twitter. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. There, I guess I don't know. Feel that's free to post that in that. the discussion chat. For sure. Everyone. All right. Let's. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good from there.